Welcome to everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor, uh, something like a dream for me to have the opportunity to give some very brief introductory remarks uh, for this much expected meeting about Steve J. Gould, uh, 10 years after his death and uh, precisely in the spenders of San Marco City. Let me first thank sincerely Professor Gian Antonio Danieli for his wonderful support uh, since the beginning uh, to the idea of this meeting and all the staff of the Instituto Veneto and Cafosca University and mainly Dr. Sebastiano Pedrocco for his valid contribution to this meeting as secretary for the logistic and the organization. So uh, let me start with some introductory remarks. Uh, as we know, uh, Steve J. Gould played different roles in his, in his life. Uh, he was an invertebrate paleontologist, taking care for many years with his beloved snails like Cherion or, and his wonderful microcosm of evolutionary mechanisms. Uh, he was also an historian of science and we remember one of his master's pieces published in 1987, Time's Arrow, Time Cycles, uh, about the discovery of deep time. He was a collector of ancient books. Uh, he was a science writer, even object of technical analysis and studies about his scientific prose and his uh, successful use of metaphors and language in science writing. He was an opinion maker, able to discuss freely about arts and humanities and relationships between science and religion. And he was even a baseball fan and expert and we will discuss about that on, on, on Saturday. But mainly, Steve J. Gould was an evolutionist, and our meeting has a specific focus on his scientific and anthropological heritage as an evolutionist. So the structure of this meeting is very uh, clear, very simple. In the first day, we will have mainly discussion about his scientific heritage, uh, tomorrow, on the second day, we will mainly discuss about his anthropological heritage, legacy, and his ideas about natural history, and also his ideas about the connection between biological thought and other field, related fields like cultural evolution, society, psychology, human sciences, and, and so on. And finally, on the third day at the Kafoska University, we will discuss about Steve J. Gould and communication of science and society with a round table dedicated to the first Italian translation of ontogeny and phylogeny. is really very big first book uh, proposed by Steve J. Gould. Uh, let me say, really has just a, a rapid overview, that Steve J. Gould was a forerunner uh, from many different points of view. Let's see together uh, such a sketch of his production and you will be able to appreciate uh, the s different stages of his major contributions to science and, 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 and popularization of science, starting with his initial training as a morphologist, then uh, looking at his discovery with Niles Eldridge, present here in 1972 of the famous paper about pancreatic equilibria intended as an alternative or, or the alternative to phyletic gradualisms, and then in 1977, the publication of Ontogeny and Phylogeny with, with his really anticipatory ideas about the connections between evolution and development. And then again in 1979, a famous paper about the spenders of San Marco that you have in your bag, uh, and the critic of uh, the adaptationist program. 81, the publication of Mishmishur of Man about his strong criticisms against social biology and, and, and ingenious and, and pure mis mis quantitative measurement of uh, human qualities. And then again, in the early 80s, 82, 87, the papers with Elizabeth Verba about acceptation and cross-level spanders, and with this interesting proposal of the concept of, coptional, of functional cooptation, which is now used in so many different fields in evolutionary thought, from molecular biology to cultural evolution. And then in, 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 in late 80s, 89, 96, two masterpieces of his work, Wonderful Life and Full House with his idea of evolutionary contingency, the role of the pure history and the supremacy of variation. And finally, among many others, 
other works. In 2002, his final monumental work, The Structure of Evolutionary Theory, with his idea, his proposal, very ambitious proposal of an expansion, of a general expansion of evolutionary theory intended as a Darwinian pluralism. Left aside other specific hypotheses like neoteny, diversity, disparity, species selection, controversial ideas like species selection, and, and so on. So just like an, as an example, uh, you will see that Steve Jay Gould was so uh, uh, capable, so able to talk about science, but also our hopes, even our narratives in, in science, and in this case, our uh, uh, misleading metaphors of progress in human evolution as in, in good words, an iconography, an expression of our hidden hopes when we talk about evolution and human evolution. And I think uh, it would be happy to see the current image, the current model that we use in order to depict human evolution as a bushy tree of uh, uh, hominin evolution with so many different species, with cohabitation of human species until very recent time, like in the, in the case of Homo sapiens, Neanderthal, Floresiensis, and so on. It's a great Gouldian uh, idea of human evolution, and I think he would be really happy about that 10 years after, uh, 20 years after the wonderful life and his um, proposal. So he was a great innovator, but with, also with a strong awareness of the history of biological thought and a strong awareness about the role of former minority traditions of researches like morphology, developmental biology, ecology, uh, and so on. And as a final remark, uh, we, I, I would like to propose to you also the fact that looking 10 years after his death to his uh, whole work, I think that we see today that there is a structure not only in the theory of evolution, but we could, but we could understand that maybe there's a structure also in his legacy. And in my view, his legacy is structured in this way. We have three kinds of pluralisms in his work, a plurality of rates of change, punctuate the Caribbean stasis, our understanding of evolutionary trends against the universal phyletic gradualisms. Then we have a also as a consequence, a plurality of levels of change, genes, organisms, niches, macroevolution, mass extinction, and so on, against the idea of a gene-centered possibility to extrapolate the complexity of evolutionary phenomena uh, all, uh, only from the genetic and lower level. And then also, as a third idea, great uh, pillar of this, of this structure, a plurality of factors of change, not only selection, but trade-off between selection and internal developmental constraints and then the role of randomness, so uh, singular contingent events in evolution against, as Richard Lewontin is going to say now in his video, against adaptationisms and this idea of uh, the possibility to separate in uh, atomic unit uh, living systems and living organisms. So. Uh, you can see, I think, in this structure of his legacy, this heritage of an explanatory pluralism based on forms, so structures, internal constraints, the science of forms in good uh, works, function, naturally, and historical contingency. So this is a tri triang triangular uh, explanatory pluralism against the hardening of the modern synthesis. I think that we have to discuss about that. This is a great heritage, scientific heritage of Steve Jay Gould today. And I think also that uh, his famous public struggles against progress, social biology, humor, the concept of human races, IQ, creationism, and so on, are not the result of his desire of visibility, but in my view, they, are, they were direct logical consequences of his idea of science, uh, his pluralistic idea of Darwinian heritage, uh, his pluralistic idea of the structure of the theory of evolution, uh, of the ec evolutionary explanation uh, for the future. So, his view of life, very synthetically, was based on, as Richard Limontin said, pure history, so observation of singular historical events 
but also emerging patterns, that is, theoretical generalizations able to explain in a plurality of patterns uh, evolutionary phenomena, uh, in the sense that we have multiple generated forces of evolution. And we have to see and to discuss about the relative frequencies of one pattern with respect to other. And this idea of the multiple generating forces of evolution is one of the main messages of the video contribution uh, that Harvard professor Richard Lewontin very kindly gave us for this uh, meeting. And it's a great pleasure to present the video now. Uh, firstly, before the presentation of the video, let me thank Gianna Milano and Ranieri Salvadorini for their support in order to make possible this interview in Harvard with Richard Lewontin. Uh, it's a great gift for our meeting and thanks to the clearness of Lewontin's refraction here, I think it's a perfect opening for the forthcoming session. So my introduction is close here and I have the pleasure to present now the video uh, with Richard Lewontin interview and enjoy the video and enjoy the three days of this meeting and thanks a lot for being here with us in this occasion.